Welcome back, everyone, to the Flying Lion podcast. What a very interesting week it has been for FC Cincinnati. I am joined tonight with Kevin, who joins us again, uh, first time on in a couple weeks, I think. Yeah, it's good to be back. Uh, Sorry I took a little hiatus there, but uh, happy to be here. Yeah, unfortunately, not a lot of fun things to talk about. Uh, In the first part of the episode, we had some unfortunate uh, games for FC Cincinnati, um, two losses for the first time I can think of in a, in a long time, um, dating back to maybe March of this year. Um, but other than those games and the recaps that we're going to get to, second part of the episode, we'll get into some cards of the week. I want to hear Kevin's jersey swap of the year so far. Um, we'll go into some transfer market options now that the trans- transfer market has opened up. We'll talk a little bit about the All-Star game, which is going to be on Wednesday. And then a little bit more about the Olympics, which is coming up uh, starting this weekend. So first off, we're going to get into the match day 27, um, which was against Chicago. Kevin, being from Chicago, <laughs> thought this would be perfect, and hopefully the result would have been better. But um, a 0-1 loss uh, at home, another home loss, um, which at that point had been two losses in a row. Initial thoughts you had going into the game about any of the lineup that you saw. Uh, what were your thoughts? Yeah, I, uh, I mean, going into this game, you knew it was going to be tight. The game in uh, late February, early March against them up at Soldier Field was really tight, so you kind of had to expect more of the same. Um, I didn't love the lineup going in with the, I think it's kind of been joked around, called like the sword formation. Um, I just didn't work against Charlotte. I feel like going with it again uh, was bold, um, and then – I mean, obviously, it seems like they kind of changed their mind on it since they didn't use it against Red Bull the following match day. Um, And obviously, without Lucho being in the lineup, that's just a massive hole. Um, You had Dotto in there, and he's just not Lucho. He's a great player. He's 19. Even Lucho wasn't Lucho when he was 19. So I think you just need more experience in that role. And uh, unfortunately, Chicago was able to exploit it. And uh, yeah, it was a rough one. Yeah, I mean, good points on that. Um, it's going to be hard to replace the MVP no matter who it is. But to your point, like a 19-year-old that has to come in and fill big shoes in that position, um, I felt like he's been serviceable all this year. But to ask a lot out of him in this game, you know, not having Lucho at all in the 18, you know, we've never won a single game uh, without Lucho, you know, either in the 18, uh, on the field, whatever way you want to think about it in any competition. So kind of crazy over, I guess, what, four years now that he's been with us total Um, crazy stat, you know, now I think Oh, five and five uh, is a total record without him. But yeah, to your point, I I would agree about the, the formation, you know, the, the term sword formation that we had for a few games Um, to kind of roll that out in the middle of the season with, you know, a lot of the same personnel, but players playing in different positions yeah, it's going to work against, like we had mentioned, a slower Miami defense, but against some of these more experienced defenses, I, I just didn't feel like it was the right call. Chicago is a game where I feel like you have to just exploit, you know, the team and the way that they were at. I think 14th in the East at the time. So go with what has worked. And, you know, I, I, just, I think it was very interesting. I don't think we had Kevin Kelsey uh, for that game as well. And again, I don't want to dwell too much into this one. Um, but Salentano did have a good game. You know, that was the one bright spot. He had seven saves, um, behind that shaky defense, but it really came down to a late Kip Keller miss header, um, which for those in the stadium, it started to rain. And if you watched on TV, Kevin, I don't know if you thought he misjudged it or if the rain had anything to do with it. I know I'll give you my two cents in a minute. Yeah. I don't know if it was a misjudge. I mean, I think just our entire back line is a little off and it, I'm not going to blame Kip specifically on this one. I think the whole there's just some miscommunication across the whole back line, and it just happened to be his turn to miss one. It's kind of gone around the last couple of games, so it was a bummer, but I don't really know if there's one specific thing to blame about it. Yeah, for sure. And, I mean, it's not like we didn't, again, have chances, you know? Yeah. And part of, uh, you know, it was really frustrating for me in this game, and, again, I don't want to go too far into it, but the first half, you have a situation where their player receives a yellow and then makes a tackle on Datto from behind. Should have been a second yellow. Should have been down to 10 men. It changes the game. I mean, no matter how much you want to say, like, you still have to win, you're right. But, I mean, if you go up a man, I mean, that's a huge advantage for, you know, 60-something minutes. 
Um, and at the point, you know, I think it had been zero zero then. Um, but then it, it really comes down to at the end of the game, just losing your head and losing your cool, which in games in the past, or I guess years in the past too, we've seen where we've kind of got caught up into those situations um, where the ref does kind of dictate the way things go. And in that game, that's for sure what happened, but to let that affect you, you know, we see uh, Alvis Powell get a rate, a red card late on in the game, you know, two yellows right in a row um, antagonized, like you had mentioned by, you know, Chicago in some ways, the first one for sure. I mean, that's a yellow, but going up and, shoving people out of the way, whether or not you're just trying to get back to your position. Um, like you said, keep your head. Oh, for sure. Yeah. He uh, obviously was a very frustrating game. And I mean, you can tell up and down the lineup and including on the bench. I mean, it's, you don't see a manager or even like anybody on the bench get two yellows that often. Um, and, you know, it obviously kind of trickles down to the point where our players it's, I'm struggling to think of a time uh, between Robinson's red in the previous Charlotte game and then the two in this one that their FCs had this many reds this close together in a season. I mean, probably back in the dark days of a couple seasons ago. But, um, yeah, I mean, Chicago knows they're in your head at that point. It is just dumb by Elvis to go through and start shoving people, both chasing the ball and afterwards. They're, you know, he, you need to know, realize what they're trying to do is trying to tick you off and, okay, you maybe take yellow on the first one, then just turn around and walk away. And he kept kind of shoving people that were getting close to him. And it's, yeah, obviously going to be a red in that situation when you've already pushed two people and you just go back. And even if they're being annoying, it's kind of, you know, the second man in, you know, their shoulder bumping him, him shoving is going to be what's cards. I think Chicago got away with out any cards is a little ridiculous. There should have been, I think, you know, he definitely earned his red, but I think there should have been at least one yellow to somebody on Chicago, uh, either one of the two players that got in his way or one of them that came up after the play was called dead and was bumping into him. Um, yeah, and then I guess after that, Noonan gets his second yellow to be sent off, and I guess just out of that, you know, it was good to see him get the most of it. He went right up to the ref and really gave him a piece of his mind. It's kind of like when someone gets thrown out in a baseball game and you go up and start kicking dirt onto the home plate or whatever. Um you know, it definitely couldn't uh, hear what he was saying on the broadcast, but you could tell what he was saying. And I think, you know, that's good. If, you know, obviously would like it to be in a situation where you don't have your coach having to get ticked off, but I'm glad that he was able to make the most of it and really let everyone know what he was thinking. And, you know, hopefully trickles down from him. The rest of the team gets fired up too. And unfortunately it didn't pay off in match day 28, but maybe it'll, be good going forward for the rest of the season yeah i mean it's definitely like the first thing that came through my head i mean that's a great point about just feeding off your manager sometimes like you have your captain out you know in the chicago game um and lucho is obviously the person that goes up to the ref the most from our team oh, sure. besides you know matt miazga so um you do get pat noonan that is maybe a little bit more vocal because of that and is giving him his two cents or three cents, you know, obviously in this game, um, but to fire up the team to your point and to really get something sparking, because again, you know, it's only a one goal game, you know, even though you're down a man, you look dangerous and to even salvage like a point out of that would have been valuable uh, in that situation, but was frustrated by, you know, the way that the game prior had gone the way that that game had gone. And it just kind of led to that point, which um, going back and kind of looking at it, I had never seen him that, fired up about anything no and maybe you know one game in the past um the 3-3 three, three game that we played new york fc like in his first year 2022 he went up to the ref and you know definitely said some words to him i remember that but he had never been you know up into the ref's face and that you know animated um but yeah to, to your point i'm hoping that you know in games in the future, maybe, you know, if he's able to voice his opinion, but not to the tipping point, um, I think his assistant coaches were like, you know what, we're just going to let him do it and see if it fires up the team. But yeah, ultimately doesn't work out. You know, we have that loss um, at home, which again, it's just frustrating that TQL had been such a fortress last year and it just doesn't seem to be that way right now. And I'm hoping for the second part of the year, we can find something special again, the fans bring it every game, you know, even in this Wednesday night game, it was a sellout um, and a good crowd at that too, even though it was raining at one point, but um, we got to feed off that, especially if we're going to have a home playoff game, but 
As we went to match day 28, we did play New York Red Bulls, a familiar foe um, up in New Jersey, not New York. Um, but uh, they we played in the Red Bull Stadium. Um, I think we played like the Red Bulls 12 or 13 times over Pat Noonan's stretch of being coached, something ridiculous like that. It's the most that we've ever played a team um, in the league, you know, of all the different teams. Yeah, um, between a couple of different cup matches right. and yeah the regular season obviously two every time it's uh i'm getting kind of sick of them but right yeah we'll take it you know we'll take whatever opponent we can get but it's not been uh one that they have performed particularly well against even with these last couple of years how dominant they've been um pretty sure that was their first uh loss at tql last year was against red bull and then their first road loss of this year also red bull it's right. uh they're frustrating yeah, it's the first time we've been swept in a series um, yeah. for the season in two years, maybe three years. You know, I wish I had a trivia question for that. But when's the last time we or lost both, you know, legs of, um, you know, the season matchup? But um, very interesting to kind of see, you know, how we were going to line up in this one, Kevin, especially. I mean, you had Alice Powell out, so you're even shorter, uh, you know, in the back line. And at least we did have Keller, Murphy, Yedlin there. Um, but he brings in Halsey. We have Kubo on the right back. So you have Oriana that's out. Acosta's on the bench, but he doesn't start. Um, Santos, Kelsey up top, and then your typical midfield. Uh, it was very interesting to see. I don't know your first impressions on on the lineup coming in. Yeah, overall, I was happy, like I said, that they didn't do the sword formation in this one. Um, you knew it was going to be a rotated squad. I didn't love uh, Santos starting. Um, I feel like just with the way things have been going, I would have liked to see uh, Baird up there. Or even, I mean, they've been playing Bupenza more than I thought they would with the transfer window coming up. I would have liked to maybe see him start. Um, I just don't trust Santos. I like him off of the bench more than I like him as a starter. Um, I was happy to see Halsey in instead of Assad. Um, I think he's got a little bit better defensive mind mindedness and is not quite as good on the ball. I think maybe that's to do with age, but... Um, I did like seeing him in the uh, rotated squad getting some minutes. I was kind of hoping that might come more in the cup coming up, but uh, I think he had an all right game. It wasn't horrible, but nobody had a good game, I would say. So it was not a, a fun one overall. But um, to your point, yeah, I mean, Asada had been playing a lot of minutes and he brings a lot of good experience. Um, but if you're going to not have Lucho on the field, I think that's where Asad and him had been really thriving down that left For side. Sure. So you're not really having that. Um, and that's why I think he goes with Halsey in that situation. My two cents real quick on the forward room though, is you don't have consistency over, you know, the last five or six games. So you try to get guys to play together and you're literally just throwing things on the wall and trying to get it to stick. But why not go with things that have worked um, in the past, you know, or different scenarios of players that have, have been well. And obviously we don't know the ins and outs of training and how people are doing and fitness yeah. and all of that. But, you know, I, I don't see Santos and Kelsey necessarily, you know, doing as well together there. Um, and in the first half, it just kind of looks sluggish um, from them. Um, and really from the team overall, I think we ended up and I'll get to it in a little bit, but with a low amount of shots in the whole game. Um, so that really tells you something that the forward room just didn't work. So, no. um, like we mentioned, terrible game all around first half, we go down one Oh though, from a Murphy misplay is what I'm going to call it. He tries to step forward and get to the ball. It leads to a breakaway, which, um, I, I felt like our defenders need to kind of learn from Miazga on how to recover. Um, go sure. back and watch his film. I mean, just see how he positions his body to block defenders from, or offenders, I should say, from getting into those positions to playing the ball, um, you know, in the box. It was such an easy play across and an easy goal, in my opinion. Yeah, it looked like to me that Yedlin called out to Keller to cover the guy without the ball. Um, and then Keller went to the ball instead of going to the open man. And there was no way Yedlin was going to be able to catch up to the Red Bulls eventual goal, goal scorer. I think if they, I think Yedlin had the right call, just some miscommunication, miscommunication there. Um, and just Yedlin being a little bit older, a little bit slower, couldn't get to the guy he thought he could cover. And if, uh, yeah, Keller gets to the open man and Yedlin can get a foot on the ball to at least maybe deflect it as he's trying to make that pass. They don't get a shot on goal even maybe, who knows. But 
Right. Yeah. I think just overall bad communication by the back line, like there was in the previous game. And then uh, the misplay by Murphy moving up a little bit higher. And then the miscommunication on the recovery is just, yeah, we, we know that's our weakness right now and it's hard to overcome. And obviously teams are exploiting it. Yeah, and like, I mean, if you look at the last several goals we've given up, I mean, it's just been, like you said, miscommunications or plays where it's like we've just seen the team in the past just do the right things uh, in those situations. You don't even think twice about it, um, whether it's, you know, just winning the ball. You know, we see yeah. Robinson step up and he's going to win it no matter what. And if he misses it, like he's going to bust it to get back or to do the right thing to prevent a goal. Um, and there's just too many mistakes you know is really what it is but miscommunication as well with the fact that they really hadn't played much together um which i mean honestly i i hate to say and just dog on them the whole time but like this is what we have right now kevin this is yeah. really like all we have um so i mean these guys are trying their best i know and they're probably so exhausted but um even more in that sense you have to communicate then oh for sure if you're that tired or if you're that worn out or worn thin or playing in different positions, like you have to over communicate those things. And that's where you really need, you know, DeAndre Yedlin's experience to dictate, you know, what everyone's doing. Um, the second goal is a little bit different. You know, that one comes off of uh, a longer shot, um, which in the moment I, I think Roman just freezes because he doesn't see it at all. Um, yeah. I, I would have liked him to at least, you know, go for it. It just is a last second thing that I think caught his eye. Um, but it's off of a, a throw in Keller heads it away the guy picks up the ball. And I think to your point, I, I feel like somebody needs to go over and just shut down the ball quicker. Yeah. Buka ran right up to him, but I, it's hard to tell from the angles, obviously if he could have gotten a part of the body on it, but he kind of just, uh, it looked like he was running at the guy and you see he's lining up for a shot at that point, bail out, throw any part. I mean, obviously not your hands, but throw a head, throw a shoulder, anything right. you can get towards the ball. And he just kind of let it go by him. And then, like you said, I think it kind of froze Roman behind him too. I don't know how good of a line of sight he had on it. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, your defenders are struggling back there. If you're a midfielder or forward, that's on a set play, like a throw in like that, just take a hit from the ball, get it, away from goal and then start right. running up the field. And I think that, um, yeah, maybe a little bit more could have been done, could have been done to defend it, but yeah, hard, hard one. I think that's also, we're just, it's not quite a set piece, but I mean, basically it's as if they had a corner, right. We're just so bad at defending set pieces. I don't know. And attacking set pieces also, it just is, been our kryptonite all year long if i yeah if i could give a red card for the season it would be uh execution and defensive execution on set pieces it's yeah should not be as bad as it is i want to maybe look up some stats to see what percentage of set piece goals we've given up or like what percentage of our goals are off a of set piece because it is way too high yeah you've probably been hearing us talk about it pretty much yeah. every episode but if we have to talk about every single episode that tells you there's a big yeah, issue problem um, and that's consistently across the board. But um, yeah, I mean, that's a deflator of a goal, though, especially going two two down. You know, maybe the first one, it's like, okay, we missed communication. Like second one, okay, a long distance shot. It's like, all right, like now we're in a big hole too, you know, and yeah. um, offense hasn't looked great. We go down 3-0 and even more, it's just deflating at that point. And that one's a scrappy one, you know, and it's Yedlin not necessarily clearing it. I think he tries his best the guy just goes over the top and yeah i mean he's Morgan a cleans it up but yedlin's not the tallest guy you know if you have robinson or miazga back there they probably get right. to that header and instead it yedlin misses it a couple people are on the ground and morgan's able to just come in and poke it right past elantano which you know it, it's an ugly one but they count just as much as the pretty ones yeah and i i think really it's is it an effort thing? Is it, I, I think honestly, it's just the, the recency bias of just like seeing how these games have gone and the team's just in a funk, you know, you just kind of yeah. get stuck in just losing and like, you need a spark, you need something. And that's where I, you know, you get Lucho in, you get Oriano in to kind of create. And I mean, they had some decent chances. You have a For Kubo sure. header, 
You know, you have uh, Bupenza look good at times with Lucho up top too, um, a little bit more active than we had seen him. But, you know, we do get one back. Um, finally, that is kind of what I would say because it comes off that VAR check. Um, yeah. Which in the moment, I mean, maybe it's hard for the far guy to see it, but it looked pretty clear that he was onside. I felt like Lucha did a really good job at holding the ball up in that situation. Um, honestly, better than some of our other forwards had been doing. It was just a quick interplay, though, and yeah. it just can show you like how his presence can change and draw defenders. You know, you get a couple people on him, and it opens up space for the other guys. Yeah, and I like to see both uh Baird and Bupenza go and uh, you know in on the ball on that one Boop just happened to get it to his feet uh and then Baird able to you know poke it home uh I you know that was kind of the look that we started the season with and you know it looked really good in a couple preseason games then uh didn't quite shake out for a number of reasons um it was nice to see it work again uh it'll be interesting to see if that's the last time we see it with transfer window opening up um True. but you know, it it shows that there was something there all along. Just a bummer that it kind of came in a game where it didn't really matter that much at that point. And it was a bummer that it, uh, you know, it was just never quite what it could have been, it seemed, uh, for a lot of the first half of the season. Yeah, I mean, like, great point. If you look at the preseason and Bupenz is putting in, you know, six goals in three yeah. games and – Baird had scored one as well off of a Lucho cross, if I remember. And it comes full circle in this moment, you know, right at this break before, you know, Leagues Cup. Um, but you get to see that again. And like you said, you get a goal off of it. But how sustainable would it have been in the last few games if they did put those guys there? That's really the question. And yeah. like you said, that was supposed to be the look. Um, so either it tells you like how bad things have gone. You know, if you really think about Baird being out so many weeks, Bupenza being out, but then yeah. how serv how serviceable some of the other guys had been, you know, and yeah. Kubo playing, you know, punching above what he had been doing. Um, oh, yeah, Kelsey absolutely coming fantastic. In, you know, and, and just putting guys in position to succeed, even though it isn't exactly what, you know, we had drawn up. So I, I do give the coaching staff credit for that and being flexible because it could, could have been a lot worse compared to, you know, what we had seen Um you know, with them being out. But if you think of other teams, Kevin, like if your main strikers go out, I mean, how often would it be that you wouldn't be able to score or win or anything, yeah, but dead in the water. A lot of the time, the common denominator is the MVP of the league though. And that oh, exactly. as long as that guy is on the field, you got a chance, you have yep. a fighting chance and Lucha's the glue of all of it. We saw that against Chicago. We saw when he comes in against Red Bull. I mean, it changes the game. Um, and I'll get to that later. There's there's a quote that uh, we heard today from the All Star Game, you know, press conference as well uh, about Lucho. But in this game uh, against Red Bulls, Kevin, I alluded to it earlier. We had four shots to their 19, even though we had 65 percent of possession. It just didn't feel that way, you know, in the time. But um, it, it is crazy to see. I think it's got to be the lowest amount of shots we had in a game all season that I can remember. Um, oh, easily. I mean, in other games that we've even tied or lost, it's been, you know, decent chances or missed opportunities, but it just didn't feel like things were clicking. And it was just the end part of a couple of bad games in a row leading into it. I'm hoping we get it out of our system now. That's kind of my overall impression is get it out of your system. You know, this is what it feels like to lose. It doesn't feel good. You know, no. we don't want to be here. Um, you have a lot of experienced guys in the locker room that, you know, have won enough to say this is how we turn it around. And look at earlier on in the season, the run of games that we won in a row. I mean, it it's doable. Um, For sure. It's just having the right personnel and honestly, probably having fresh legs too. So I, I'm really excited about uh, our break. It couldn't come at a better time. No, it could not. I mean, I think every season's going to have their low point. Last year might have been the exception. We didn't really have too many lows um so you know i think as long as this is the low point and we come back after league's cup and we're able to really put into another gear finish out strong i don't know have we maybe lost our chance at a shield hard to say really that one's more on the other teams now we kind of took our fate out of our own hands which is not great um but i think get home field advantage 
for the playoffs, really make TQL a fortress again, and then just take it and go for a cup. Um, if you and- have to like come away with one thing that you could say, and you know, you're speaking to the supporter shield standings. And right now I think we sit what five points behind um, inter Miami's at 53. I think we're at 48. Yeah. Galaxy are at think- 49. Yeah, and Columbus's possible overall is now higher than ours because we've right. got uh, more games played than they do. Right. They lost to Atlanta, so that helps a little sure. bit. Um, but, yeah, I mean, you're still in it. And through this stretch of losing essentially three players, three star defense guys, and being yeah. able to be, like, within striking distance of uh, a trophy is still a credit, you know, to what the team has done. Um, but... If you look at, I was just going to mention the first game back is inner Miami, you know, in that yeah. August 24th game. So you have a fighting chance to gain points. That's a huge, even more than the last game with them, a huge distinguishing, you know, thing in the standings. That's the yeah. next MLS game where we could gain, you know, up to two points behind or be down by, you know, a lot more, you know, eight points potentially. Yeah. Um, so not to like put all that pressure on that game, but it is vital. And the second half of the season is not easy, Kevin. I mean, we have LAFC, you have the crew coming out of the break in or Miami. We are going to have to hit the ground running and really kind of figure it out. So um, we'll get to it next week. We'll talk a little bit about leagues cup and the approach of the team. You know, do we go with, Hey, do we, we need to get our starters back in line? You know, do we need to start winning again and have that fresh taste in our mouth to go into the second half of the season? Or is it more, do we rest? Do we have some younger guys that fill in or new guys that can come in and kind of rejuvenate the team? I think it'll be a mixture, but like we said, we'll chat on that a little bit uh, next week. And Kevin, you're welcome to join for that one too. Um, But we spoke about, you know, recency and how the team's been. My trivia question of the week for you, Kevin, when is the last time that FC Cincinnati had lost three games in a row? So I... I know we had a run of it was at least 10 games, but I'm pretty sure it was more at the end of the uh, 2021 season. Um, But if you're going to do carryover, I'm pretty sure they lost at least one to start the 2022 season. So I'm going to lock in uh, three in a row with uh, yeah, end of 2021, start of 2022. I think it might've been something like, 12 games lost in a row um, at that point. So yeah, that was ugly. I'm glad those days are behind us, but uh, (laughs) yeah, this three doesn't feel very good right now. Yeah. So stay tuned to the end of the episode. We'll see if Kevin was right. Hey, FC Cincinnati fans. We are pumped to share our new sponsor, Peak Cocktails. I'm sipping on the passion fruit margarita, which is so spicy and it makes me feel like I'm on the beach. Ooh, that sounds great. I'm drinking the Blood Orange Spritz, which has a great subtle ginger flavor coming from its scientifically formulated recipe to promote exercise recovery, enhance relaxation, and support a better night's sleep. Ryan, that's exactly why I love them. Their cocktails are designed to fit seamlessly into your health-conscious lifestyle, giving you the enjoyment of a delicious adult drink without the downsides of alcohol. Guys, next time you are looking for that post-workout drink or an afternoon pick-me-up, grab a Peak Cocktail. Visit them at www.peakcocktails.com and use the code FLYINGLION at checkout to get 20% off your first order. Zach, enjoy your drink. Welcome back, everyone. Thanks for joining us this week. It has been a tough week for FC Cincinnati fans, so we appreciate you joining this episode. If you've made it this far, you're past all the... uh, the sad part of the episode is what I will say. I feel like the second half, we have uh, a lot more to chat about, you know, in, in this coming months, I would say too. And, and even with the all-star game this week. So um, before I guess we get to all the good stuff though, I do want to hear your card of the week, Kevin. Yeah. I just got to give it to general injuries and red cards. Uh, It's our team's just so banged up right now. And then on top of that, you get people making dumb plays or bad calls by the ref that are taking two of the defenders that we did have out. Um, and then you get Lucho on top of it for missing the majority of two games there. Um, you know, if we have a, not even necessarily a full squad, but a less injured or less penalized squad, 
Um, you know, those might be different games. Oh, yeah, Nuobodo out for on yellow card for one of those games, too. I mean, it's just been we're already so hurt. The last thing we need is people taking dumb penalties. Um, it's just, and then it makes people play harder like Lucho, and then he gets hurt and misses two games. So it's just, I'm excited for this break. I think we have everybody coming back off of uh, yellow slash red card accumulation. And hopefully everyone's nice and healthy. That can be. Obviously, we're missing a couple guys for the season, but um, yeah, just people missing the games. It's that's that, that's got to be the red card because if we're yeah more cohesive team in those last couple games, I think we look a lot different. We're probably still at the top of the supporter shield standings, and just being that banged up, it's hard to hard to put wings wins together. Yeah, I mean that's. The name of the game, honestly, in the MLS is just staying healthy through the long season. You know, I mean, it's so many games, so many months. Um, Last year, you know, at least looking back at it, it's like, how lucky were we? You know, we did have Miazga out for a stretch uh, with international duty. We we did have some guys with injuries, but nothing like long standing, you know, or sustainable. We had a lot of the same pieces. Um, This year is, in a lot of ways, just been unlucky with the injuries Um, and it's going to come around, you know, it, it's part of the game. Um, but the red card part, yeah, for sure, is is part of where I get frustrated. Um, and, you know, I, I would expect it out of some of them. But in some ways, like you said, we're handicapping ourselves, you know, and um, how would that have been different? We can go back and say hypotheticals on, you know, if we had Lucho against Chicago, if we had Noonan coaching against New York, if we had Wobodo for one more game, you know, it would be different. Um, but the guys that come in, like they have to step up and yeah. for the most part, like we've gotten that right and been able to survive it, even though it has been probably more than any other team in the league. Um, but I, I do like that. That's, that's a good one. Um, it's probably been the card of like the first half of the season, to be honest, Easily. <laughs> but, um, my card of the week is, uh, more about the season tickets. So, we get a email about our season ticket renewals today. And to everyone's surprise, there's a little bit of a bump in the price of the season tickets. Uh, a little bit for some. I've heard 25% for others. Um, it, it's been uh, very interesting to hear from different people, you know, in different parts of the stadium too, um, how much it has changed. And obviously, as the team has been doing so well, the demand is higher the wait list to get season tickets is higher too. Um, But I would expect a bump. It's just like, whoa, this is a little bit of a shock for a lot of people. And the timing of it, I think, is what's tough for me. It's like, okay, you see this team lose three games in a row. Let's just, you know, tell everyone about, oh, let's renew them. And by the way, it's a little bit more than last year. uh, And for some, a lot more. So I just thought that was very interesting. Yeah, that's bad timing. I bet the ticketing office, you know, probably has this date circled on their calendar for sending stuff right. out months in advance, but it it, it doesn't look good. Um, but yeah, that's rough. I mean, like you said, it's probably honestly a product of the on-field results, though, ultimately, if they've been a much, much better squad over the past sure. two and a half seasons now. Um, so you got to take the bad with the good in this case of, it's going to cost you a little more, even not necessarily season tickets, but just trying to get single game tickets um, has gone up quite a bit the past couple seasons, which is unfortunate. Um, thankfully, they're still available for the most part, but it is, uh, you know, it, people are wanting to go to games more. They're having more and more sellouts, which is a great thing for the city and for the team. It just makes getting into the stadium just a little hurt your wallet a little bit more. But yeah. And I mean, like you said, the there. Demand is not a bad thing. Like just no. that, like your team's doing well and everyone wants to go. It's just like the Bengals, you know, when they made the Super Bowl, and the next year your season tickets are through the roof. It's like, well, yeah. it's good they're doing well. You know, we like that. Um, but at the same time, it's like, all right, well, we want to be able to pay for our playoff games, you know, later on in the season too. Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, I think like overall, you know, I can't be mad if this money goes towards some of the transfers, you know, that we're gonna bring in too, like. I mean, that's not a bad thing if we're able to like directly say we're contributing to that. It's just I know our our owners, you know, are, are billionaires, you know, and they have plenty of money. It's just like you said, I'm pretty sure it's the fact that the team's been doing well 
um, there's going to be a little bit of an inflation process. But it again, it's just interesting to see year to year, how does that change and what does that look like? Um, and if people, you know, were considering moving, do they consider moving seats now or not? I don't know. It'd be interesting. Um, Kevin, I do want to ask you, though, for the first half of the season, since we have you on tonight, um, what has been your jersey swap of the year so far for the team? Yeah, um, I'm going to go with one specific player here with Luca Orishano. I mean, he came in with some pretty big uh, shoes or I guess maybe, you know, shorts to fill with uh, replacing Barrial. Um, and uh, it's got to be hard. I mean, obviously, it's the life of an athlete, especially the way uh, soccer is of, you know, you, your goal is to get to the bigger leagues. And this guy left his home to a new country at, you know, age of 23, 24. Um, he joined the squad that's already been partially together. Obviously, he kind of joined in preseason, um, maybe really, you know, technically started at the beginning of the season. Um, and obviously, it took a couple games to get into the swing of things. Um, but his on the ball skills are just absolutely fantastic. Um, you can tell that he's already been developing his defense more when he's been at wing back. Um, I think, you know, particularly the Miami game in the sword formation, he looked great as um, kind of that attacking mid or almost, you know, the third forward up there. Um, I do want to see the normal formation return and with him at the wing back um, where, you know, I think if he continues to uh, work on his defense, I think he's just an absolute, you know, all time player for us. Uh, not that far in the future. Um, I think hopefully, maybe this off season Albright can work some of his magic and we can uh, lock him up long-term. Yeah. I mean, good points. He's just been unbelievable this year. Um, where's his best position, you know, is really what I would ask you because he's looked dangerous in a lot of different spots and credit to him. I think that shows his versatility. Um, he was selected to the all-star game as a winger, but yeah. you know, do they move him up more? I don't know. It'll be interesting to see. Um, I think Nancy will probably play him out wide because he does like his um, wing backs, you know, in that system that Columbus has. Um, so I think that's what you'll see on Wednesday when he's playing. Um, I think it would be a good shout to have him in the skills competition for the all-star game as well. Like you mentioned, the dude's ball handles are just incredible and not only controlling the ball in tight spaces, but to be able to get out of tight spaces and accelerate past defenders um, which again, I've been saying all year long is like a little bit different than Barrial. Barrial had a lot of the same traits, but just the acceleration and the changes. Yeah. Speed. Um, he, he's unmatched in the acceleration, especially oh with the ball. It's yeah. So, with the mean, ball. yeah, it's great to, and being able to change direction and stutter step, throw off defenders has been so much fun to watch. So yeah, I think, uh, yeah, if your season ticket hike goes to getting him long term, I, I'm OK with you having to pay a little bit more for that. Yeah, for sure. I mean, that's a good point. Um, he's on loan. You know, we have to remind yeah. ourselves, but we do have that option to buy different than your yeah. mascara last year. Um, so let's trigger that option. You know, let's make exactly. it happen. At what point do we hear that? You know, are they going to wait for the full season? I would say I've seen enough. Let's do it right Same. now. You know, let's let's sign him and, and make it happen and say moving forward and for next year. We know we're going to have Orshano, and then you build more of your team around that, especially in the fact that you're in this window right now. So we'll kind of get into this conversation. The transfer market opened on the 18th. So it's been, you know, now the fourth day. Um, FC Cincinnati have not made a signing. We've had some rumors out there and a center back that has been uh, rumored to come in. And um, we'll see where that goes and we'll get into it here. But I, I think you have to find somebody that matches Orshano, um, Lucho, Lucho, especially, you know, obviously, um, but to be able to play off those guys, cause I think you're really building the team around those two, uh, and the talent that both of them have at this point. Yeah, I'd agree. I mean, if you would ask me at the beginning of the season, I would have said we need, um, you know, I would have said we needed another striker and I still think we could use one. Um, I think injuries have dictated that we need, uh, center back depth, um, if we can get someone long-term great, if all we can get is kind of a rental to get through the end of the season to replace Miazga as he's been out, as he's going to be out, um, you know, if we can get a better player for a shorter amount of time to help us with this season, great. Um, but I think it's just been proven that our real lack of depth is at center back. Um, so I think getting options there, 
Um, I think over the last couple of games, what we've proven that our lack of depth at that attacking midfielder position with Lucho being out, um, like you said, I mean, they kind of had Orshano there in the sword formation a little bit, and they had Dotto next to him um, slash kind of replacing him in those games where he was out. And it's just not the same. I think you're never going to get another Lucho, but if we can get a player that coming off the bench can play that role for 30 minutes to get Lucho some rest for more important games, uh, that'd be key. Um, maybe some help too. I mean, Wobodo and Buka are running all over the place. And usually our answer for that is Kubo, but he's been starting uh, more lately. So it's just hard to, uh, really nailed down. I think, you know, our main lineup's pretty set once everybody's healthy with the exception of center back. So I think that's our main replacement is get somebody next to Robinson and Murphy out there, but honestly two people at center back to have another option off the bench. I would not be upset. And then yeah, just depth pieces all around. Yeah. I I think we can all agree with that. Um, Sam and Zach, you know, I'll I'll shout out their takes on it. Both of them obviously are saying center back. Everyone's saying that. Um, But the center mid depth, I think has been the underrated thing. Zach also agreed with you, you know, uh, center attacking mid um, in addition to a striker. But um, I I think with having um, Pinto out, you know, we kind of lost uh, at least a good opportunity for him to get some valuable minutes through this stretch. I really would have loved to see uh, him kind of grow into that position uh, and to really take it as his own, you know, maybe even like while Kubo was starting, you get Pinto that can actually contribute and do some things. He scored a goal, you know, earlier on in the season in champions cup. Um, we just haven't gotten to see him. He's been injured, um, yeah. which is unfortunate. And I, I really think like having that experienced person that you can, Put in a couple different spots, um, like you mentioned, center attacking mid type guy, um, even like a Nico Ladero who plays for Orlando would be a really good piece, you know, or somebody similar just to say, hey, like you said, 20, 30 minutes um, if we're up in a game, you know, let's give Lucho a break. I know he never wants to come off the field, but that sure. would be valuable. Um, and I, I think that's a really good point. Um, from my standpoint, you got to go for. Uh, a TAM level center back, you know, freeing up Miazga has opened up space on the roster for us to go and get somebody. Um, So whether that be uh, Chidobi, you know, the guy that they've been rumoring um, uh, from Portugal, Um, shout out to the post Cincy for that one and and getting that out there. Uh, I hope we can make that work uh, and actually get that sign, um, you know, here soon. But um, again, for me, a backup, midfielder with experience like i mentioned and then u22 striker um i think there's a lot of options that you could go with maybe a south american guy that can um hook up with lucho um and possibly a dp striker but honestly in the last couple games it looks like more and more that bupenza at least for now is staying i don't know that's very interesting um he did look better in this game with lucho are they having troubles with offloading him you know at this point that's kind of my question. Um, he's got a very, very high salary. Um, do we just kind of buy that out and say, you know, let's release the player if we can't find something and just cut our losses? Um, or do we find a better situation, you know, in the winter? Is that a better time? Do we just go all in on, hey, center back right now? What's handled the striker position later on? Um, now's your window, Kevin. That's my opinion. You know, you got to do whatever you can to win you're in this position where you're five points off a shield you could go into the playoffs with a home game possibly more uh with possibly a two-time mvp you know at the point so why not throw everything you have at it i know albright's working his tail off um but i'm going to give him some names at center back because we again have one but i'm going to give him a couple other guys that i've found yeah go guy i I shouted out earlier on in the season. Um, he's a former Houston Dynamo center back. So his name is Teenage Hadebe. He's uh, from Zimbabwe. He's a free agent right now, but was playing in Turkey. Um, actually, in the spring, he played, I think, 12 games over there. He would be a good fit knowing the MLS, played for Houston before. Again, he knows the league. Um, a veteran guy that can come in and fill that spot at center back was exactly what we need. John Brooks, another one that. U.S. men's national team, former guy. We have, you know, Yedlin, who's played with him before. Miazga's played with him before. I think Baird has a cap with him as well. Um, Brooks would be a nice fit, and he had played over uh, in Hoffenheim in the Bundesliga. 
we do have that connection again with Hoffenheim. Why not try to explore that? You know, I would love to at least just get some sign of like, we've been talking to these guys. We've been having conversations. Um, and the last one is Alan Franco, who actually played for Atlanta United, um, but now is with uh, Sao Paulo down in Brazil. Uh, he's 27, but he's from Argentina. So maybe is there a Lucho connection or or, or sure. Chano, uh relation? And again, a guy who knows the league. He might have played with Emil Asad at Atlanta United too. So maybe he could convince him to come over. Veteran guy that could fill that slot. Um, I don't think you go like with a younger person uh, or maybe like a, even a mascara talent wise, you know, would be great. You know, I would love that. Um, but Mascara didn't have as much of the experience. And I think at this point in the season, you do probably need more experience than anything. Um, sure. Would you, consider, would you consider bringing, if Mas, if the Wolves made Mascara available again, would you consider bringing him? Obviously, he's familiar with the club and the system. Kevin, let's um, make it happen. Yeah, he let's was on right loan now. with, he was on loan in Spain for the for their season, right? And yep, then Real. Yeah, so it'd be interesting to see, I mean, Obviously, a little bit of a rough end in that uh, Columbus game where he was kind of a factor in the loss there. But if he could, cut, if he becomes available, I think that someone that knows the system knows how to play with Murphy. Um, I would, I he'd be the name that I'd be interested in seeing. Obviously, kind of a young guy, a little less experience, but if you know the club, that's a big boon in my favor. I mean. Yeah, you know the club, you know the players. Um, I don't know. It sounds like it ended well. You know, we did let the player obviously go back. We didn't have that purchase option. But from all I've seen, like, he's got really good relations with everyone still. Um, and, again, a guy that, like, could come for six months. We're not asking him to, like, dip out of his career. Oh, no, right not now. at all. Yeah, right now he's training uh, with Wolves. I know they have their preseason starting. So he's fighting for that starting spot or at least like a bench spot for wolves maybe a fringe type player um which obviously that's going to be his number one but if you do have that loan situation and you're trying to find that um do you go for a six month thing where you say hey i know we had this relationship before let's honor it again and i know you guys are in a point of need give him you know that time and then find something in the winter where maybe for another six months he could fill in for a premier league side um, for their last six months of their season. So that's a really good point. I didn't really even think I would obviously love to have mascara. I didn't even think of that as an option because he just did play so well in La Liga from everything I've been hearing. Um, yeah, I saw a couple highlights. So, and he looked pretty good still. So yeah. I, I would take him back. And then, you know, maybe one of the more experienced guys that you mentioned is a tandem coming in would be, uh, I think that takes our, I mean, probably not up to what our defense was to start the season with Miazga being out, but I, I wouldn't be disappointed if that was what happened. I know it's kind of a pie in the sky shot, but I'm trying to manifest it. We'll see if it happens. I'm ready just to hear some more rumors, man. I mean, the window sure. being open now for four days and you haven't heard any other names, you know, um, we know obviously what the whole fan base is calling for and everyone can see it. Um, I just hope we can get somebody in sooner than later, obviously to fill in, to get acquainted with the guys. Um, and that's where I really do think if, in League's Cup, we we start to play more uh, of the guys that we're going to see in the second part of the season um, yeah, sure. than the young guys. Maybe everywhere else you do play a little bit younger, but at least the back line, you start to get them gelling. Um, but like I said, we'll talk about that next episode. There you go. For Wednesday, the All-Star game, Lucho Acosta was named the captain for the second year in a row, which is just an awesome honor. Um, I can't remember a situation where a player has been named captain twice in a row for an all-star game. Um, I don't know if they had done captains for three or four years ago, to be honest with you, but um, at least in the last several years, it's pretty cool to see a consistent player. And honestly, Kevin, to have our guy FC Cincinnati player being the captain for the all-star game in Columbus. That is, yeah, that's kind of a awesome in their face a little bit. It's pretty cool. Um, it did kind of seem like the way that the MLS was announcing it, um, that they were almost kind of forced to go with their third option as captain. I know that, I mean, they're just trying to make Messi the poster boy. It kind of seemed like he wanted to be, then he got injured. Uh, you got Chicho out in Utah that like was having a crazy, crazy good season. Now he's got his four game suspension. 
Um, and then it goes to Lucho. It almost kind of seemed like they were getting ready to name one of those other two guys, and then it goes to Lucho. So they did um, say and, in the release that it was this way before those guys had the injury and the suspension. That's what they say. That that was the fan vote. But to your point, I think if there is an option for Messi, then that's yeah. probably what they would have gone with. Yeah, I feel like that's maybe pandering a little bit, but. Um, you know, it's a really cool honor for Lucho. And like you said, a two in a row is absolutely incredible. Um, I'm really excited to see him in the skills competition. Uh, I think it's only 10 of the all-stars are going to be competing in it. And the lineup's already been set. Uh, don't know what like game Lucho is going to get to play, but it's still be cool to see him. Um, I always get more excited for that. Like the skills competition in any of the all-star events, if you like <laughs> in the NHL and like the NFL in particular, like the skills competition are more fun than the actual games. Um, I always just, the layout of the MLS all-star game is always just a little bit bizarre to me. Um, I always like, you know, I think it should be an East versus West conference bringing in the Mexican league all-stars is cool, but ultimately I don't really care about those guys. Um, and I would rather see, you know, the best of the East go against the best of the West and, right. you know, maybe make it matter. I don't think it should be like the MLB where it like determines home advantage in the like playoffs but um you know maybe something a little bit more of, of stakes for it um ultimately i'm excited to see our guys play um i hope they don't play too terribly much though since you know the all-star game doesn't really matter that much i'd rather see lucho and luca rested uh than getting a lot of minutes so hopefully they go they have fun they can, you know, maybe get their drivers to take them home, sleep at their own, sleep in their own bed since it's just one city up the highway. Um, and yeah, get them and the rest of the club a nice break here before we've got our uh, League's Cup games that we'll be talking about next week. And just, yeah, stay healthy, I think is my main thing. I think if, uh, you know, Lucho walks out and he's wearing the armband and plays for five minutes and comes off, I'd say, Good job. Successful you know, all-star game. Yeah. Yep. That's fine for me. You know, I don't need to see him ball out. It would be cool to see him obviously score, assist, do sure. something. Anything get the MVP like of the game. But, like, I don't need to see that. You know, no. I, he's already been named the captain. Um, You know, maybe Orishano, you know, he's he's got an opportunity to do something cool. Um, But my honorable card of the week, Kevin, uh, comes from the all-star game where you cannot buy Lucho's all-star jersey right now. Really? It's absolutely ridiculous that right now all the players that you can buy is Messi and then I believe Diego Rossi, uh, uh, Cucho, you know, from uh, Columbus, and I yeah. think maybe one other player. But um, you cannot get a Lucho um, all-star game jersey right now, which I think is just ridiculous. Hopefully they're going to be able to change that soon. Um, but why not be able to buy the players, you know, and that's why you have the all-star game. Yeah, and that from a league that pushes jersey sales as much as they do, it's surprising that they aren't pushing everyone's that you know each team gets their representative. Um, yeah, that's really bizarre. I don't, uh, I don't know why they're doing that. That's a bit bizarre. I guess get a messy one and iron and uh, make your own. Yeah, I mean he had already had the the number ten, um, even though he's not even there. You know, yeah. he, he already got gifted that one. And now people can go buy the Messi jersey and he's not even going to be playing. But you can't get a Lucho, even though he's the captain. Just doesn't make any sense. Um, but hopefully they're going to be changing that. There was rumors today that they're going to look into that. Um, and like okay. you said, the MLS has got to get that right. I mean, that's that's ridiculous. Um, as we move along, though, past the All-Star game, this coming Friday, the Olympics is going to be starting in uh, France and the U.S. will be playing France in the first game. So on July 24th, like I mentioned, I think last episode, Miles officially is, you know, um, over there and starting to work on getting ready for the games. Um, is he going to be a captain or do you think Walker Zimmerman will? What, what's your opinion on that? I know you put the post in there about it. Yeah, I saw today that they, he was officially named captain, but I oh, could was see. He? Okay. Yeah, he was officially named captain, at least according to Wikipedia. I don't know how, uh, uh, how, uh, serious that is but um i could see you know if zimmerman gets subbed off or doesn't start a game or whatever i could see robinson getting the armband easily sure. um you know zimmerman's a little older i think a couple more caps for us than robinson's got 
Uh, they're both like the overage player, or, you know, they get so many of the over 23 players for the right. Olympics and they're both that. So it makes sense that they'd kind of take on a lot of the responsibility. Um, yeah. I mean, I think he gets the start. We'll see, you know, who gets the armband majority of the games. Um, but yeah, I'm excited to see him play uh, overall. Definitely. Uh, soccer is not my like favorite Olympic sport to watch. It's kind of third tier, almost like international soccer competition behind the world cup. And then the combination of Copa and euros. Um, it is cool to see the younger guys get out there. You know, majority of the rosters are made up of their U 23 uh, teams. So I'm excited to watch it. Um, but it's not, you know, I kind of almost am probably going to take this as a break from soccer the next couple of weeks and probably watch, uh, you know, some volleyball, some track and field, some gymnastics some swimming, and, you know, kind of the stuff that you don't pay attention to quite as much throughout year to year. Um, uh, get some rugby sevens in there is always fun to watch. So um, yeah, I'm excited for it, but ultimately it's not the best display of international soccer there is. So <laughs> It'll be fun, but I don't think it's going to be anything miraculous. Um, Would you be drawn think... to watch the U.S. Uh, because Miles is playing? Would you want to see how he does on the team? I would have watched the U.S. games. It probably at least highlights whether or not we had a guy on the squad. Um, you know, I think group stage games, I probably will try to catch. I don't know what times they're on necessarily. I think with the time change, we might get a couple of, they should be mostly watchable. Mm -hmm. uh, I think they're kind of playing earlier or they're kind of playing later there. So they're on kind of early in the day here. Um, but, you know, I think we've, like I said, we got France this Friday and then we've got New Zealand and Guinea are also in our group. I think um, we uh, should be able to advance out of the group stage here. We, uh, France is probably the toughest draw, we, but we drew them two to two back in March. Um, and we beat Guinea in uh, that same kind of round of friendlies. I'm pretty sure three, nothing. So uh, I don't think we've played New Zealand recently, but we actually have, uh, that's going to be kind of a preview of their game at TQL that's coming in uh, in September, which is kind of cool. Um, so yeah, I'm excited to watch Miles and Team USA in that. But um, yeah, assuming they should get out of there, out of the group stage. And then once it gets into the knockout, I'll probably pay a little bit more attention. But like I said, it's not necessarily what I'm tuning into the Olympics for. It's kind of, tertiary but still exciting i hope uh the u.s team does better than the copa america team that did not get yeah. out of the group stage um and it, it seems like a you know with new zealand um you know and then guinea i think those are the other two teams yeah so i mean yeah absolutely a chance to advance uh do something special um you have a france team that's led by thierry Henry a yep. former MLS uh, legend, you know, um, yeah. obviously a big time legend at Arsenal, but um, oh, just a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Just, just a little bit, but um, had been rumored if, if they do well in the Olympics uh, might be considered for the U S men's national team job actually as well. So that will be that interesting, be interesting. Yeah. to see how uh, he leads the France team. But I, I really want to see how miles can uh, handle a little bit more pace, you know, obviously, France has got a fast team, um, yeah. really, really skilled team too. So to be playing, you know, obviously such a big team, even though they are like a younger squad, it's essentially like a senior national team, um, you know, for France. I'm sure their under 20 team could probably beat a lot of, you know, main teams. Oh, for uh, sure. So, yeah, that'll, that'll be really interesting to see. Um, I'm trying to think if there's any other – there's a couple of other MLS guys, but – you know, obviously miles is the one that I'm going to be looking out for the for most. Sure. Um, I was just going to look at it and confirm the time. So it is going to be on Wednesday uh, at 3 PM. There you go. Is that game against, uh, against France. So go ahead and, and watch that one. Um, we're excited at least to kind of see, you know, where miles goes, where our guys go in the all-star game, like we mentioned on Wednesday, um, and then for the next episode, we're going to get a little bit more into Leagues Cup and the preview for that. What does Pat Noonan do? Where does the team go with that? Um, and kind of our outlook for the second part of the season. But before we go here, Kevin, I'm going to give you our trivia question and then uh, the answer here, if you're ready. Yeah, ready. So last time that FC Cincinnati had lost three games, um, that was the question. When was the last time? And it was exactly right. Like Kevin had mentioned, the last part of 2021, 
going into 2022, if you want to count that, but in a row consecutively uh, would be the 2021 season. This is the first time that Pat Noonan had lost three games in a row as a head coach um, total, you know, cause he's only been with FC Cincinnati, yeah. um, which again, has just been awesome and a credit to him for what he's done with us um, that this is the first time. So I can't be too mad is kind of what I'm telling myself. Yeah. Yeah, like I said earlier, if this is the low on the season or low of like Pat Noonan's, you know, career with us, that's all right. We've had a really good run. Let's just, you know, settle things down over the next month and then come out strong against Miami and uh, really turn it around and kick some butt in the last couple of games of the season and get a good place into the playoffs and go get a cup. We're still in a great opportunity. You know, we're not at the midpoint in like, we're completely out of it. You know, look at a couple of seasons ago. I mean, obviously we've been spoiled by just so many good things, um, but that gives me confidence that they're going to figure it out and, and get things right. But thanks for joining me tonight, Kevin. And uh, everyone, we will uh, see you next week. Mm-hmm.